1 John chapter 3, verse 18. My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. All right, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rachakwadash. Yahweh is the true name of the Heavenly Father in the Holy Tongue. Yahweh Shai is the true name of the High Priest and Savior of Israel. And Rachakwadash is the Holy Spirit, which is the Comforter. Double honest the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for leading by example in these last days. And Shalom to the hopeful elect. All you Aki and making your bodies a living sacrifice. Now through the Spirit, the name of this lesson is the Bible is full of action verbs. And in this lesson, I just want to draw a distinction between what this world would consider, you know, nouns and what the scriptures would consider actions, things that you're supposed to do, things that you're commanded to do, to take action in. Because this world has a, an idea of, you know, words like, like faith, love, fellowship, uh, truth, repentance. These things are seen as nouns in the world, but in the scriptures, they actually prescribe action from us. The most high requires action. Matter of fact, let me read this scripture real quick in the NLT. It says, dear children, let's not merely say that we love each other. Let us show the truth by our actions. So we're required to show love by, by actions, man. And when you go into this term action verb, let me get that real quick. This is a uh, thesaurus.com. It says, what is an action verb? An action verb is a verb that expresses something that a person, animal, object, or process in nature can do rather than expressing a state of being. So a state of being would be like a noun. You're just, you're just here uh, doing this. This is a, you know, sometimes you'll see a word that ends in you know, I-O-N, which means that it comes from the French language. English is really a bastard tongue. That's an amalgamation of French, Latin, Greek, even Hebrew, all sorts of languages uh, comprise English, which is why, you know, the scriptures can be such a stumbling block. Even when you go into, uh, you know, the King James, which is the most accurate translation of the Bible, it still is written in old English. So it's written, technically it's written in English, but it's written in a form of English that no one speaks anymore. So the Heavenly Father raised up prophets in these last days to go into the etymology of words, to go into, you know, of course, precept upon precept to really make the scriptures come alive and to teach our people what the Most High actually requires of them. And the Most High requires action. He doesn't require lip service. You saying you believe, you saying you care about the name of the Lord, you saying you, you know, you want the Heavenly Father to send his son back, but you're not doing anything about it. That's not that's not the love of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. As a matter of fact, while we're on the topic of love and we're in First John, let's let's just go over to the fifth chapter. This is First John, chapter five, and I'll start at verse two. It says, "By this we know that we love the children of the Most High, which are the Israelites, you people of so-called Negro and Native Indian descent. You're the children of the Most High." It says, "When we love the Most High and keep His commandments." For this is the love of the Most High, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. Now, in the world, the word love is a noun. When you go into the definition, it says love, noun, an intense feeling of deep affection. And this is what people this is what people mean when they say love. I love you, man. I, I love this woman. I love my job. I love, I love God. When they use the word love in the world, they're saying an intense feeling of deep affection, which is a noun. And here it says verb, feel deep affection for someone, which this is still a noun. It's a state of being. Going back into, you know, what is an action verb? An action verb is a verb that expresses something that a person uh, can do rather than express a state of being. So saying, you know, you feel a deep affection, that's technically, you know, when you, when you go into the sentence structure, it's technically a verb, but you're still describing a state of being. When you read the Bible, Love is not a state of being. Love is an action. Let me read that again. 1 John 5, verse 3. For this is the love of the Most High. This is the love of the Most High that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. Right? When you keep the commandments of the Most High, you don't do it out of uh, spite or, you know, begrudgingly like, oh man, I can't, I can't eat pork anymore. Like we don't, we don't bemoan the fact that we, you know, can't willfully sin. When you come into the truth, showing the love of the Most High means that His commandments are not grievous to you. It's not grievous to to grow your beard, to not shave, to not, you know, commit adultery, to, you know, just to be a brother, to be a, a so-called decent human being. The laws promote life. They promote 
a prosperity in the spirit, all right, not necessarily growth in this world. This world is being destroyed. But when you come into the truth, you start to grow as a human being. You become more of a man. All right, if you're a so-called black woman and you repent, you become a woman for the first time in your life. You become a help me. You become feminine. So this word actually causes you to prosper in the spirit, whether you're a man, woman, or child. Now, when you go into the world again, they're defining love as just a state of being. It's just this feeling. I just... I love you guys so much, man. I, you know, we have people that pass us on the block when we teach on the highways and hedges as we're commanded to. You have people that come by, they'll, they'll throw up a black fist. They'll, they'll say how much they love what we're doing. But that's a state of being. That's an intense feeling of deep affection. They just feel something warm and bubbly in their stomach. You know, I, I get butterflies. when I, You know, that's, that has absolutely nothing to do with the love spoken of in the scriptures. And Yahweh Shai said himself in St. John, let me get that. This is St. John chapter 14, verse 15. It says, if you love me, keep my commandments. And this is in red letters, and this is plain. All right, the Holy Scriptures speak of conditional love. There's no such thing as unconditional love in the Scriptures. That's a, that's a deep feeling in the world. That's a state of being. You know, your mother might have unconditional love for her children. You might have unconditional love for a woman if you're a simp. These are things that, you know, go back into a state of being, a state of feeling. But in the scriptures, these are action verbs, man. If you love me, keep my commandments. Those are, those are actions, all right? Now, another example is this word fellowship. Now, when you go into, again, the world, how the world defines fellowship, it says, noun, a friendly association, especially with people who share one's interests. Now, when you hear the word fellowship among these so-called Christians, you know, the Baptist church, the Pentecostal church, uh, Jehovah's Witness, all of these, these uh, pagans, that celebrate, you know, complete perversions of the scriptures, they're looking at fellowship as a noun. Okay, I'm I'm fellowshipping with this guy. We we hang out. We're fellowshipping. That's what the world considers a fellowship, a noun. But in the scriptures, there's a very specific action that comes with fellowship. Let me get that in Philippians. This is the letter to the Philippians, chapter one, verse five. For your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now being confident of this very thing that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Yahweh Shai Mashiach. Now let's go into this word fellowship in the Greek. It's koinonia, which if you're in a, if you're in Great Millstone, New Orleans, you should be more than familiar with this word. You know, the priest Kaya goes into it all the time because it's, it's very important. Now koinonia says what? Fellowship, association, community, communion, joint participation, intercourse intercourse intimacy so let me stop right here for you to have intercourse with someone in a non-sexual sense of course you're not supposed to you know uh commit abominations when you come into the truth this intercourse is talking about godly discourse it's talking about being intimate in a uh in a spiritual sense you're supposed to be intimate with the people that you're doing the work with you know you're supposed to know who's laboring amongst you and that requires action it doesn't require you just going to church every Sunday, so-called church, all right, the scriptures refer to those buildings as, as harlot houses. But, you know, to the minds of these people, when they go to quote unquote church every Sunday, they're fellowshipping. They're hanging around a group full of people that allegedly believe in so-called Jesus the Christ. And none of them are doing the works of the Lord. None of them are following the commandments. Okay. They don't have the love of Yahweh. They don't have the love of the heavenly father. So it's just a bunch of people singing and dancing and you know, you get familiar with people because you see them every week, but you don't know this man. You don't know what his inward thought is. You don't know what his hope is because the pastor, so-called, he's not breaking down the scriptures correctly. And so you're surrounded by a bunch of people that don't know the scriptures. So there is no intercourse. There is no intimacy. It's a bunch of degenerates that break the commandments of the heavenly father that are hanging around one another. That's, that's what the world considers fellowship. It's just a noun. It's just a state of being. All right, I'm pretending to believe in the Bible and I'm hanging around a bunch of other people that are also pretending to believe in the Bible. But at the end of the day, there's no edification going on. There's no uh, growth in the spirit. You know, when you when you come around the actual men of the Lord and you're part of the body, you can actually see growth in brothers. You can see a brother cross over and then see him become more of a man. You can see him become, you know, more austere. You can see him become more disciplined. You can see him become more like Yahweh Shai. All right. The longer you're in the truth, the more you should become like Yahweh Shai Mashiach, which requires action. It's a fellowship is actually an action verb. In fact, when you see uh, when you see C here, it says a gift jointly contributed. Now, to contribute something, that's an action. It's an action verb to contribute your gift to the body. That means you have to 
You have to become vulnerable around other men. You have to become comfortable communicating. These are all things that are required of you. This is an action. It's not just a state of being like, look, look, I'm an Israelite. I know I'm an Israelite. You know, you're an Israelite. We're wearing fringes. So let's, you know, we're cool. You know, everything's cool. We just, let's have a unity camp where we stand around wearing fringes. That's a state of being. That's not an action. You're not actually taking action to become intimate with your brother, which again requires true brotherhood. And that's another, that's another thing that's a, a so-called noun in the world. You know, just being a brother. A brother's a noun. That's just, you know, somebody you're related to. It's a male that you're related to, or, you know, it's a friend that you call a brother. No, brotherhood is an action in the scriptures. You can't say, this person is my brother, and you just suffer sin upon him. It tells you in the law. Matter of fact, let me get this real quick. In Leviticus 19. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 19. Verse 17, it says, Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. So in the world, if you have the love of the world, which is a state of being, it's a state of feeling affection towards someone, and then you fellowship with them, which is another state of being, you could call someone your brother and just watch them slide, watch them backslide, go back into the world, not rebuke them. You could watch them. You could suffer sin upon people in the world. All right. Brotherhood is a noun in the world. Fellowship is a noun in the world. Love is a noun in the world. And the truth, these are all actions. These all, the heavenly father requires you to rebuke a brother. If you see him going off, if he's actually your brother, all right, you're supposed to be your brother's keeper. These are things that require action of you. So, you know, if you come out of the world, whether you're a so-called Christian or you know, if you're if you're one of these people that's like, I'm I'm spiritual, not religious, whatever you call yourself, when you come across the truth, you have to shed this worldly view of words in the scriptures. When you read the scriptures and you come across words like love, brotherhood, fellowship, these aren't just passive. It's not again, it's not a state of being. You can't just say, well, look, this is my brother, but, you know, he can do what he does. You know, I, I ain't going to hate on another man. You know, what that that whole black culture spirit has absolutely nothing to do with the Holy Spirit. All right. We we're commanded to take action when we see certain things. And we're also commanded to exhort one another, which is another example of an action. Let's get that in Hebrews. This is the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 10. Verse 24 it says, and let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. So you provoke unto love, which is an action. It says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. So when you see the day of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai approaching, you're supposed to exhort love, you're supposed to exhort good works, you're supposed to exhort edification. That's that's an action. It's not just saying, oh, I'm in the truth. I know I'm an Israelite. Oh, I love that brother. I love my people. You have a lot of, you have a lot of keyboard warriors and, you know, Jake's outside of the truth that hate the men of the Lord that claim to love the two thirds that claim to love the nation of Israel more than Yahweh Shai. They claim to love the two thirds because, well, well look, the two thirds are going to wake up too. And, you know, people are acting like they love Israel by uploading videos, speaking about love, you know, again, but their concept of love goes back to what? An intense feeling of deep affection. They have an affection for the two thirds, but they don't actually love the two thirds. All right, if you love the two thirds, you will rebuke them. You will reprove them. You will go out on the highways and hedges as commanded by the Holy Scriptures. And you would, you would warn your people of the destruction to come. That's what you do if you actually love somebody. If you love the nation of Israel, you're gonna rebuke them and you're gonna exhort them unto good works. Now it says here, and so much the more as you see the day approaching, which goes into the third word that I wanted to go into in this lesson, which is, which is faith. Okay. Faith is in this world, a noun. All right. You have faith noun, complete trust or confidence in someone or something strong belief in the most high or in the doctrines of a religion based on spiritual apprehension rather than proof. So again, this is a noun according to the world. This is something, you know, you hear people say all the time, I have faith in this, I have faith in that. But faith is actually an action when you go into the scriptures. Matter of fact, we're, we're in Hebrews. We can just go one chapter over. This is the letter to the Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now substance, sub means under, and stance means to put or to place something somewhere. So the word substance is really to put something under you, to make something your foundation. Faith is the foundation of things hoped for. And hope 
and the Greek is el peace, which is an expectation. Now, this is this is technically a noun, substance, but it's also an action. When you have faith in something, you put it under you. You you make it sort of like an anchor to what you believe in. And, you know, the scriptures tell you Yahweh Shai is the anchor to our souls. And when you read Hebrews 11, the entire chapter is going into actions through faith. OK, th by faith, through faith, everything, every example that the apostle is given here is, is showing you that faith led to an action. OK, faith caused Abel to offer the most high, more excellent sacrifice. Faith caused Abraham to, to go into a place for an inheritance. Faith caused Noah to build the ark. And man, just, just read this chapter, man. Faith is synonymous with action. Faith leads to action, okay? According to the Holy Scriptures, faith is not you saying, I believe in this, I believe in that. Faith caused Moses to forsake a high position in Egypt to suffer with his people, man. Faith is not just some, some feeling, okay? This is a state of being. This is this is how I feel. No, faith is actually, you know, the, the air that propels you. It's actually the, the spirit, man. Faith is the substance of things not seen and the evidence of things hoped for, man. So what do you hope for? Do you hope for the second coming of Yahweh Shai Mashiach? If so, you're commanded to do certain things. First of all, you're supposed to watch, according to the, the scriptures, you're supposed to watch the prophecies. You're supposed to fellowship again, which is an action. And you're supposed to keep the commandments to the best of your ability, which again is an action. Love, Fellowship and faith are all actions. And, and what does it tell you in James? Let's get that next. James chapter 2, verse 20. It says, But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? So faith without works is dead. What does that mean? That means faith in the scriptures is an action verb. It's not a state of being. It's not a noun. It's not just, oh, yeah, yeah, I have faith. Yeah, I believe. No, it says faith without works is dead. Was not Abraham our father justified by works? justified by works when he had offered Isaac, his son, upon the altar. Now, imagine Abraham saying, look, I have faith. And then the Lord asked him to do something. He said, eh, I don't know. That's a little much. I have faith in the God of heaven and earth. I have faith in a power that, you know, created everything. But he's asking me to sacrifice my son. That's that's a little too much for me. No, that, that would be an example of disbelief. That's a clear sign that you lack faith, which means what? Faith is synonymous with action. It says, Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect, right? Works, aka action. By action was faith made perfect. So, you know, Abaratzadis is all coming together to you. Actions prove your, your fellowship, it proves your love, and it proves your faith. All of these things go hand in hand. So let me let me end on this. This is uh First Thessalonians chapter one, verse three. Remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord, Yahweh Shai Mashiach, in the sight of the Most High and our Father. So you see here, your work of faith, faith is in action, all right? Your work of faith and labor of love. Again, love is in action, all right? Labor is working, all right? You work love, you work faith. These are things that you do. It's not a state of being. It says, knowing, brethren beloved, all right, which goes into fellowship, brethren beloved, your election of the Most High, for our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power. Let me read that again. First Thessalonians chapter one, verse five. For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and in much assurance, as ye know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. And ye became followers of us. So again, this goes into fellowshipping. So you have a... Uh, you have your work of faith, which means what faith is an action, not a noun. You have your labor of love and you have brethren that follow the men of the Lord because they believe in the Holy Spirit and the gospel, which is what? An action. All right. Fellowshipping, love and faith are all actions according to the Holy Scripture. These are action verbs. So if you're a part of a, a collection of weirdos or degenerates or scoffers that are trying to tell you that, you know, camps are evil or you know, you're going off if you follow men, you're going off if you do this and that. Basically, any type of action that you take is going to be evil to someone that is completely engulfed in inaction and being lazy and being a sluggard. Someone that doesn't want to do the action verbs required in the scriptures, they're going to take heed to these worldly definitions. Oh, love is just a deep, intense affection. Oh, fellowship, that's just when you associate with someone who shares a similar interest. Oh, faith, faith is just having trust and confidence in the most high. These are people that 
that don't the scriptures don't come alive to them. They don't see any need to take action. These words, these words all go into states of being. Just this is how I feel. You know, I feel like I love the most high. I feel like I, I have an association with other Israelites. I feel like I have faith. But then you go into the scriptures, there's nothing but action, man. The men of the Lord are about taking action and getting busy. So Abarat Desire, this lesson was edifying to the elect, those that take action. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rachakwadash, double honest to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom to the hopeful elect.